Hey developers, today we're going to look at Deno. Now Deno is a secure JavaScript environment. It's by the creator of Node.js. It's pretty neat. I'm going to explain why you guys might be interested in it, why you might want to use it and how to get started on it. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of Vue.js in action and a bunch of books. So if you guys are interested in JavaScript, React, or anything like that, make sure you click on that subscribe button, click that bell button, and also leave me a comment below if you've heard of Deno, have you, if you've used it, what your thoughts are. I'd love to hear your guys' comments and feedback on it. So let's begin. So what is Deno? So Deno is a general purpose JavaScript TypeScript programming environment. It's created by Ryan Dahl, who created Node.js, and it's built using Rust. So there was actually this article that Ryan Dahl created a few years ago about some problems he had with Node.js, some things that had blown up about it that he wasn't happy about, and especially with the NPM, the package manager. And I think Deno kind of came out because of that. So one of the things that he addressed in it, of course, is the how the modules work, how packages work inside Deno. He also had TypeScript baked in. So if you view something like TS Node, it's uh, it has some similar functionality to that, but it's you know much much quicker, and it's secure by default. So you actually have to pass certain flags when you run the app to have it access HTTP and other things. So we're kind of kind of deep dive into each one of the sections. Before I get too far, I just want to show you the website. If you're following along, this is the website deno.land. You can get all the information about the manual, the API reference, and uh, he and they basically on the website they describe it as secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. So that's the way they describe it. So this is great to uh, get up and running a quick project, but it also can be just like Node. You can create a whole interactive, very secure apps out of this. So let, let's keep going. I just wanted to show the website through Deno.land. All right, so I like this quote from Ryan Dahl. You can never understand everything, but you should push to understand. You push yourself to understand the system. So make sure that maybe if you don't understand exactly everything, but understand how the system works together is how I interpret it. Maybe dig a, dig a little deeper to understanding the underlying development and programming and internals of what you're working on is how I interpret that. All right. So TypeScript. So love it or hate it, you can use TypeScript with Deno. I think that's one of the selling points of it. If you are not a TypeScript fan, you can, since TypeScript's a superset of JavaScript, you can write everything in JavaScript too. That's completely fine. But uh, one nice thing is it has basically a default config file. So you don't need to add your own tsconfig.json file. You can um, you can you can add your own if you like by running deno run dash c and then the name of the file tsconfig dot json and then the, the file you want to run it's pretty easy to run uh, if you have a deno file you just can change it to dot ts and then just run it like i said you don't need a tsconfig file it's not com it does everything internally so it internally compiles it to javascript you don't need to necessarily have an extra step so if you've used the typescript commands uh, on the command line where you take a types uh, a typescript file and you have to convert it over to javascript to run it you don't need to do anything like that which is a really cool selling point so security so it's secure by default and what i mean by that is you can either um you have to pass it a flag when you run run it to run without permission so if you let's say you run a file deno run file ts if you'll get a problem you'll get an error like this uncaught permissions denied Access to run a subprocess, run again with dash dash allow dash run flag. Um, but you can also run it with permission. So like deno dash dash allow dash read equals Etsy. So you can basically s set specific flags when you run it on the command line to allow it to have access to certain parts of your file system or to access the network or running subprocesses. So that was really important that they that this security was set in place so you can't um, create an app that just automatically you know writes into a file system and deletes everything. Or maybe write an app that connects to some website that it shouldn't be connecting because you need to pass it a certain flag. So it does have this kind of security model involved with it. There's also, uh, if you are not big on the security and you just kind of want to play around with it, 
use TAC A, capital A, that just always allows it. It just allows all the permissions so you don't have to worry about finding out how to let a certain permission in, but it's not recommended, obviously. And by the way, as of this recording, I believe they're in a release candidate. The, first, the version one will be out very, very soon. So ECMAScript modules. So that's one thing that Deno tried to have out of the box. If you have been following the Node world for a while, you know that they use something called require.js where you use these require commands in it. And uh, some people love that. I, I'm not a big fan of it, but it's fine when you're writing Node apps. In the, in the latest version of Node in 13.2, and I think even, even in some earlier versions of Node, you had to put an experimental flag, but you can actually get these ECMA in, uh, script modules to work. And there's still some weird issues. You had to use .mjs and things like that. But with Deno, it's kind of baked in from the beginning. You don't have to worry about using require or anything like that, which is nice. It does have a, one thing that they wanted to make sure is that NPM packages are pretty complicated and one package relies on another package that relies on another package. And we have package.json, we have package lock files. Deno kind of throws that all out. They, you can have any sort of package you want. You don't have to have it in this package JSON. You don't even have a package JSON. You don't have a node modules folder. Essentially what you do is you import in your packages like this, import whatever it is from, and then you can just put the direct URL and there's something called deno.land, which I can tell you about, but it could be anywhere. It can be on your hard drive. You can just basically link to the package um, anywhere. It's decentralized, doesn't have a central server and just link it that way. And then you can run course everything else. Uh, when you do run deno for after the first time, it does download these packages and puts them into a local cache, kind of hides them in your hard drive for you. So it does do that for you. One thing also is that promises have native bindings for async. So this, uh, it, it promises are kind of baked in to Deno. So instead of having to set each uh, function with an async and then await things, it you can just await without putting an async function around it or wrap it around it, which is really nice. So kind of the default is, is promises with this async await. So one thing they did, I mentioned everything is decentralized but they did have a, a standard library which uh, is pretty good and so their standard library they have it doesn't have any external dependencies it's reviewed by the deno team and uh, it's high quality code so that is on the deno.land website they have their own sort of collection of standard modules that they recommend that you use you can get third-party modules to work um, they mentioned something using pika and, and a and a few other sites, but for the standard modules that they recommend, th this is what they have. And right now they have like colors, date, time flags, have an HTTP module node. By the way, if you're using, if you want to connect to uh, a website or do an HTTP request, they have fetch built in. If you've ever used node and you've tried to use fetch, you, you can't, you have to download some kind of library. It's actually built into Deno, which is nice, but they also have HTTP as well. So let's take a look at a demo. So I have an empty app here. And first thing I want to tell you guys is if I, since I'm using Visual Studio Code, there is this thing called Deno. It's a, a uh, plugin extension. And what happens is if you've noticed, if we go back to the sample code here, you see it has .ts. Now with TypeScript files, you normally don't put the .ts in when you do your imports. And that's something that uh, you have to do with Deno and your Visual Studio code will give you a bunch of errors if you do that. So this actually helps fix that error and it'll look on your hard drive. And so that way you don't get any weird errors in your IDE. So I would recommend if you're starting to play around with Deno and Visual Studio code, download this extension. And first we need to do is install Deno and there's a bunch of ways you can do it. So if we go to the official website, you can just do the curl install sh command. You can also use homebrew or chocolatey, and there's a few other ways. So I'm going to just do a curl command. Let's see if I can get it installed. OK, cool. It said it installed. Demo, Deno was installed successfully. Manually add the directory to your home bash profile or similar. So it wants us to add these two to our 
let's see here I have a bash profile so I'm gonna use vim real quickly so I'm gonna make sure this as I'd recommend is in there and that's it so that's all it asks me to do and install so it's installed and uh, I should be able to use it so let's see if it works uh, I'm gonna leave the terminal up and running right now and I'm then in my new folder here I'm gonna create a file and we call it hello world.ts and you can do this to JavaScript files too but I just want to do console.log hello world and I'm gonna do deno run hello world cool so it compiled it and here you see hello world so it's working out of the box but let's try a server example so instead of doing that I'm gonna do this import serve and um, okay so I'm getting the errors on on this right here but I think it's because I haven't downloaded the package yet so I'm gonna run this and so you see it's downloading all the packages, basically this package. And now it's giving me an error, uncaught permission die, network access, run again. So I'd have to use this allow-net or, so let me see that. I can do den deno run dash dash allow-net and then the name of the file. And now I see hello world and it's running. So if I go localist 8000, cool, so I get the hello world there. That's working, that's awesome. Now another thing I could do instead of running dash dash allow dash net I can just run dash a that allow everything and that'll work too and I won't get any errors. You can see in the example here too that uh, I did, I'm doing this for await but I'm not wrapping this whole thing inside an await or an async function so it's working without that which is nice. Okay let's take a look at one more thing let's see if we can use something called oak. Now oak is a middleware framework for Deno HTTP server, including a router middleware. So I'm going to see if we can get this working and actually grab information from a website and display it. So I'm going to create a new file. I don't know. I'm just going to call it OTS, and I'm going to save it. I'm just going to make sure it works here. So by the way, it's giving me an error here. I'm going to do any, and I'm going to do Deno run dash a oak. And so now it's running on port 8000. So I'm going to open up my local host, refresh it. Cool, I got hello world. But what if I wanted to like maybe use the JSON API placeholder? Like I'm using some fake REST endpoint. So I told you guys that fetch is actually built in, which is cool. So I can go const data and then fetch here. And I have I can use awaits, which is great. So I can await it. I don't have to to um, actually wrap it in an async function because it's there by default. And now I want to do something with this data. So I'm going to get this data. I'm going to do the data.json. I'm going to await that. I'm just going to go ahead and add async in here so that way it doesn't give me an error in the error here. And now I should be able to, instead of sending this hello world, I'm going to see if I can send this JSON. And I just stop and restart the server. And now I'm going to go back here and refresh. Cool, there it is. So it worked. It's grabbing the JSON and it's sending it as I expected it. So then I can obviously do whatever I want. I could, um, if this was like a REST endpoint, you can then devour this and do whatever you want inside of it, which is pretty cool. Okay, cool. So that's just another example of something really neat that you could do with Deno. All right. So that is our application. That's Deno in a nutshell. I want to ask you guys how you guys liked it. Make sure you click that like button, smash it. Don't break your keyboard. Subscribe and then leave a comment. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I appreciate it. Take care.